are you trying to run further than 5k but you can't or have you run your first 5k today and after the first five minutes you decided i'm going to give up or in all your runs do you start out running out far too fast and feel absolutely horrible at the end well there could be a couple of reasons for this and sometimes it's more to do with the brain than it is to do with the legs for first time runners the reason they're running is maybe it's the alternative it's the only thing they have time to do on that day and due to using running as a last minute resort, it's difficult to fit in the workout that you want to fit in. You want to get the most value for your workout in the shortest amount of time. The problem with this is that you might go out a little bit too fast in your first day of 5k or your first 30 minute run. And due to this, you feel horrible after you've achieved the 5k run. There's a common myth that we see in sports movies that we need to train 100% of the time all of the time. This is impossible to do. The majority of runners' workouts are actually revolve around working around 60 to 80% of their effort, just getting in easy miles and comfortable running. What does this look like in numbers? Sometimes this might be your heart rate around 67% of your maximum heart rate. Or if we're gonna break it down even easier, you should be able to talk comfortably as you run. There is a reason why you see this group of runners running around in the park, doing miles and miles and miles, and talking to each other comfortably. They've learned how to easily run and comfortably run throughout the week. And now you might be looking to move from your 5K to your 10K distance, or that 10K to a half marathon. Because you're trying to increase this distance, there could be some fundamental flaws going on in your training plan. For example, today, day one started the year, I'm running a 5k in 40 minutes. Six months from now, that 5k might be 35 minutes, and maybe at the end of the year, I'm running that 5k in only 25 minutes. That's a fantastic improvement in time over the year. However, the problem that you now have is that 40 minute workout that was a longer workout that might be more beneficial, has then turned into a 25 minute workout, and now you need to find ways to increase your time spent on your feet. You've actually now reduced the amount of time in your feet, even though you're now getting a better workout in or a faster workout. Another one of the issues that you might have with running is you've been told that running will ruin your knees. All that hard impact, all that surface pounding is going to be bad for your body, but nothing can be further from the truth. It's not running that ruins your knees, it's incorrectly running. You might have a pre-existing injury, a pre-existing condition in regards to your hips, your pelvic stability, or some other part of your body. Any of these instabilities will be brought out in running. Because one thing we can admit with running is, it's a repetitive exercise. It's one foot going in front of the other, it's a constant unilateral movement of left foot to right foot, left foot to right foot. 100% of the time in a run, one foot is in front, one foot is in the back. What are some of the ways I can turn myself into a runner who can run maybe three to five times a week for 30 minutes? Try and go out for a run where you're able to talk to yourself. Even bring a friend with you, someone who might be more comfortable at running and make sure you're able to talk to them from the very start of the run to the very end of the run. You don't need to finish this run with a couple of sprints, just get out and run comfortably and enjoy the movement on your feet. Stop thinking that every session needs to be left on the floor. Yes, it is nice now and then to have workout sessions where we feel that we've used every inch of our ability to run. But if you're not a regular runner and then you're deciding you to do a workout and you want to see the fastest 5k you can do, the fastest first mile you can do, or the fastest 10 mile run, you're probably going to end up creating some sort of tightness or aggravation in the body. It's much better to start to run at a steadier level. Get used to the movement of running and enjoying running. What could running incorrectly look like? Well, it could be you're going out and you're trying to sprint every single session doing your maximum of running. This is only going to create problems if you don't have a baseline of regular running in your training. You're wearing completely the wrong footwear. You're wearing runners with no support. Or you might even try to move into a five finger shoes, one of those shoes which is barefoot running. Barefoot running is nice if you've been running the last couple of years in your bare feet, but if you've no experience walking around your day to day in your bare feet, swapping into a barefoot runner at this beginning is not a very good idea. One of the common things we'll see in the park when somebody's running incorrectly is they're doing too long of a stride. Ideally, we want our foot to land directly on our body when we're running, and having your foot placed too far in front of your body puts too much pressure on the knees, too much pressure on the hips, and overloads the body incorrectly. Try to make the foot land directly under the body as you run and you'll have your body correctly over your feet to run more efficiently. Sometimes running on a treadmill I think can create problems for when you want to go outside. When you're on a treadmill, your foot is not moving left or right. You're moving perfectly forward. This can lead to problems when you have to go inside, when you have to go left or right, when you have to take a curve, when you have to go up onto a step or a platform. In fact, if you look at how a treadmill works, the actual belt of a treadmill is fractionally pushing your body back each time. So it's not an exact comparison to what running outside is like. Now don't get me wrong, travelers are great for warming up and cooling down after doing workouts at certain times when we don't want to go outside. But if you're looking to run outside, if you're looking to do races, if you're looking to do events, you need to be as specific as you can to the event you're going to do. If you're planning to do a hill race, go find a hill. If you're planning to do a road race, run on the road. While running is a great way to lose weight, if you start out running too quickly and too fastly and you are overweight and the foundation of your body isn't strong, the chances are when you're overweight, it's going to add more impact onto the body. If you have any instabilities around your pelvic area or around your hips, these are probably going to be highlighted in regards to running. If your hips are too tight, the chances are running may increase that tightness. And if your glutes are too weak, this may also create issues with your pelvis. So, I want to have a more steadier running lifestyle. 
but I'm not really a runner. What can I do? Try to think your first experience into running as in training for training. We want to create a steady base of miles to make our body used to the movement of running and also to figure out if running is creating any issues with our body. If running is creating issues with your body and you're finding tightnesses, it can be much easier for you to solve these problems when you're in steadier training. If you have these tightnesses and decide then to increase your running into high intensity interval training or fast 5Ks or fast 10Ks, you're only going to create more issues in your body. Start slow, run slow until you feel more comfortable to run a little bit faster. Before each workout, it's good to dynamically warm the body up. Squat, lunge, hinge, rotate, listen to your body and see where the tightnesses are in the body. If you do this before each run, you'll have information on where your body is before you start the run. The more often you do this, the more you'll feel where your flexibility is in your hamstrings, your quads, your hips. If I wasn't a regular runner, I'd start today by going every 20 minutes. I'd go out light and slow and make sure I could listen to some music and talk myself if I needed to. If that run went well, and the next day I woke up and I felt okay, within 24 to 48 hours, I'd increase that to 25 minutes. I'd follow this on again the next 48 hours until I'm confidently running maybe 30 minutes, three to four days a week.